everyone, it's Kim here at Hancock Homestead and Gardens. And today I thought I would share with you something that I found fascinating, interesting, and just fun. And that is gnomes. Um, I was working in my flower box and I was looking at these little guys and I was like, how did you come about? Who thought of you? And so I went on the internet and I did some research. And this is what I found out, and that is that um, the lawn gnome is um, always a humanoid figure, and they usually have on pointed hats. Um, that's just the way they were conceived, and so they usually wear pointed hats. And they're used as decorations in your lawn, in your gardens. And uh, the figurines originated in 19th century Germany. Um, from 1860 on is when they became most notable. And in Germany, they're called Gardenswug, Gardenswug, which stands for Garden Dwarfs. Okay, now the town that they uh, were first uh, produced from is kind of debatable. However, um, the most, uh, the well known town is um, Grafendrod in Thuringia, Germany. And I'm sure I butchered those names and I apologize, but, but that's the best I can do. And that's the town in Germany that's most noted um, for making these. Um, and the reason for that is because that town is known for its ceramics. And Philip Grabel um, would make uh, ceramic figurines for people to use, um, you know, as display. And as a side note, he started making uh, terracotta lawn ornaments, like figurines of animals. And he had heard uh, a local myth about gnomes being little um, humanoid-like creatures that would come out at night and work in the gardens for serious gardeners. And he thought, you know, that's a, you know, that's really a cute myth, and it might be fun to make some of these gnomes for gardeners to use as decorations. And so he added them um, to his inventory. Well, um, this was back in the um, 1860s, and there are still generations of the Grabel family over in Germany today still making gnomes. Um, from an article I read, there are 250 million gnomes in Germany. <laughs> that's, that's how much they like them, and I think they're pretty cute too. Well, um, after Grabel started making them in Germany, then uh, the idea quickly spread to uh, France and to England and even to Switzerland, and in Switzerland they made them from wood. Okay, um, now the way Grabel would make his gnomes is uh, he would use a terracotta clay and he would pour this clay into molds and then uh, the molds were allow allowed to set up and dry and uh, the insides were hollowed out and uh, leaving a, a clay shell. And then um, the, after they were dry, then they were um, fired up in an oven to make them even um, harder. And then they were painted uh, into little individuals uh, so that each gnome could be a little bit different from the other. And uh, they're usually males and they're oftentimes bearded. And like I said, they wear the hats, but more and more are becoming female. And oftentimes you'll see the gnomes posed in um, some kind of a fun position uh, doing some kind of a fun hobby like fishing or napping and that's because uh, gnomes are supposed to work at night which means that they have their days off when we see them uh, doing their favorite pastime. Now gnomes have become controversial in serious gardening circles um, especially in the UK and they were um, actually banned from the prestigious Chelsea Flower Show and that's because the organizers felt like they were just too distracting. And, you know, I have to admit they, they do have a good reason for thinking that because they are somewhat distracting. And the organizers wanted the focus of 
the garden show to be more on the natural aspects of the flowers and of the gardens and uh, to be more focused on um, the actual gardening than just on the cutesiness of it. However, in 2013, uh, Chelsea did uh, raise its ban and allowed them because it was their 100th anniversary. And they had um, some outside organizers uh, saying, look, you know, we, we should be allowed to um, attend your flower show um, because we represent the hardworking um, middle class and the working class in their suburban gardens. And, you know, we should be part of your show, especially since it's our 100th anniversary. And Chelsea said, you know, okay, we can do that for you. Now, in um, other um, countries, there's um, gnoming taking place. And gnoming is when people pull pranks on gnomes and on gnome owners. And um, one of the pranks is in France and in Italy, I read that um, they actually have two organizations that see it as their task to return the gnomes to the wild. <laughs> And I just think that's, you know, so funny and so cute, you know, and um, sounds like a lot of fun to return these gnomes to the wild. And then in other countries, including ours, including the United States, a prank is to uh, kidnap a gnome uh, and take it on a trip with you and then send the owner of that gnome postcards of where this are postcards or pictures of where this gnome is at. And um, I just want to say that anyone who might be thinking about kidnapping my gnomes to go on vacation, that's fine, but just take me with you. <laughs> I want to go too. Okay, and uh, so anyway, but Travelocity, they have used that prank to their advantage. And Travelocity uh, uses an advertisement called Where's My Gnome? And they have a little um, I think he's blue, a little blue outfitted gnome uh, to be their spokesperson. And uh, so they took advantage of some of the pranking. So anyway, I just think that's some really fun history about these guys and um, how they have evolved. And uh, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to know more about our homestead and what we do on it and what these little gnomes are helping us to do, please subscribe. This is Kim at Hancock Homestead and Garden saying bye for now.